wonderful day and to all the blessings that you have given us. Lord, please guide us in understanding your word. We love you and honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Hello kids, kamusta po kayong lahat? Today we are going to learn from our Bible at the Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 14 and 15. Let's begin the story. Samuel was the judge over Israel, and the Israel by this time had no king. The people of Israel said, We want a king like the other nations around us. Hindi sigurado si Samuel kung ano ang kanyang gagawin. Kung kaya, he prayed and asked God. And God said, Give them what they want. But, warn them what it's like to have an earthly king. What is an earthly king? A king could make his son to serve as an army. A king could make his daughter work for him. Or, a king could 
take away all the fields and service of the people. But the Israelites, they didn't care. Give us a king, they said. Therefore, God chose his soul to be the first king of Israel. But, unfortunately, Saul didn't make good decisions. Once, Israel had an ugly war with the Philistines. After seven days, Saul and his men hid in a place called Gilgal where they waited Samuel to arrive. As that what Samuel told them what to do. The Israelite soldiers are so afraid to fight the Philistines as they started fleeing one at a time. Kung kaya, na desisyon na lamang si King Saul na kumilos sa sarili niyang paraan. He offered a burnt sacrifice to God. The moment that he finished with the sacrifice, Samuel arrived and asked, What are you doing? My men are so afraid to fight the Philistines and they starting to run away. I had to stop them. I am seeking for God's help because without God's help, it is impossible to fight this war. But Samuel said to Saul, If you only obey the God's command, then he will make you the king of Israel forever. Pero ngayon, na hindi ka sumunod sa kanya, your reign will end. As he already chose a new king whose heart follows his. Another time, Saul once again disobeyed God by not destroying the Amalekites as what he was ordered. But he captured the king and led his soldiers to take a lot of sheep and cattle. When Samuel challenged his disobedience, Saul had an excuse. Yes, I have brought back the king, but the rest of the nation is all wiped out. We brought the best of the sheep and cattle to make use of them as sacrifice to God. He wants our sacrifices. Yes, he wants sacrifices, but he wants obedience more. And you disobeyed him. It is obedience that pleases God. Samuel said firmly, God has done with Saul's excuses, and he has chosen a new king for Israel, who Samuel will anoint very soon. Kids, today we have learned obedience from the story of King Saul. Pero ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng salitang obedience? To obey or to be obedient? Well, to obey our parents for an example just means to do what they say. Pero, minsan sa dami ng rules o mga bagay na dapat natin sundin ay hindi na natin sila nasusunod. Kids, do you know that these rules are given to us for a reason? And these rules are given to us by someone who loves us and cares for us. And we should follow these rules. For an example, I have here a piece of paper kung saan kailangan kong gumawa ng isang plane. Start na tayo. Hmm, paano nga ito gawin? Sabi, kailangan focus na inaang. Tapos, tagagawa lang ako ng mukhang plane dapat. So, yun, pinood ko siya. Another fold. Tapos, fold po ulit yung side. Tapos, side. Hindi ba? Then, para magbukang plane, parang ganito ata yun eh. Ayun! Di ba? Mukhang man siyang plane. So, try natin. Pwede pa rin? Shhh! Ay! Well, at least mukha siyang plane. Pero, kung susundin ko gamit ang mga nakasulat sa instruction dito, may susubukin ko makagawa ng isang magandang aeroplano. Sabi dito, kailangan kong hantiin. Nakagawa ng isang rectangle. Tapos, dito para magkaroon ng kumayong sukat. Tapos, pupok ko dito sa gitna. Ipanin dito ang kabila. Tapos, may aking hangitin sa gitna. Tapos, ang magkabilang dulo, ang magsisibing kapak. Ayan! Kagawa ako ng isa aeroplano or paper plane. Subukan natin. Wow! Ang sabi sa Luke chapter 11 verse 28, Blessed rather those who hear God's word and obey it. That is true. 
it will be the instruction, the God's word, and we do what it says, which is obeying, we will be so pleased. Things will work the way God meant for them to work. Just like when we follow these instructions on how to make a paper plane. Hindi ibig sabihin ng mga rules na ito ay para pahirapan tayo. God loves us. Kung kaya tinuturuan at tinutulungan niya tayo. God wants us to obey our parents. Our parents love us. They give us rules to follow for us to be safe, to help us, and be happy. So kids, this week, I want to challenge you. Think of at least one rule in your life na nahihirapan kang student where you can ask God for help because God is so pleased if we ask Him for help. And I'm sure that you will be blessed if you follow God's instruction. Hello mga bata, this is Teacher Faith again and I'm gonna share with you the lessons in the story of the disobedience of King Saul. Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng disobedience? Ang disobedience ay hindi pagsunod sa mga instructions, rules, or batas. For example, not following what our parents says. Just like when your mommy or daddy says that it's study time but you want to play. So you did not follow them. And of course, it is also when we disobey God. For example, di ba gusto ni God that we love our fellows, our friends, but there are times that we become angry with them and inaaway natin sila. So, yan ay isang way to disobey God. And God does not want that. Here are some consequences of disobedience or yung mga pwedeng mangyari kapag tayo ay nag-disobey. Number one, God's anger will rise. Saul's disobedience made him lose everything. He lost his kingship and even faced calamity as a result of his action. After a while ruling as a king, nag-iba ang ugalit ni Saul. Sa mga panahong inaatake ng Philistine ng Israel, may ginawa si Saul na ayaw ni God. When Samuel did not arrive on time in a meeting with Saul, he became impatient. He must have thought that he needed to do something to prove his power. Gumawa siya ng bagay na ang isang high priest lamang ang dapat na gumawa. Hindi ito nagustuhan ng Panginoon dahil ito ay isang disobedience. Number two, disobedience to God does not bring the assurance of blessing. Our obedience is important to God. Kapag hindi tayo sumusunod sa Kanya, ito ay isang kasalanan. When we do this, we are not respecting His commands. Mahal tayo ng Diyos, pero hindi niya tayo ibibless kapag patuloy tayong nagdi-disobey sa Kanya. So we are running away from God and we are believing in Satan's lies. Dito hindi na si God ang naglilid at saan lamang tayo mapupunta? Just like what happened to Saul, mapupunta tayo sa kapahamakan. Again kids, what are the two consequences of disobedience? Naalala niyo pa ba? Number one, God's anger will rise. And number two, disobedience does not bring the assurance of blessing. It's memory verse time, and our memory verse for today is found in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Follow after me, ha? Huh? Okay, here we go. To obey is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. One more time. To obey is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Here are the materials for paper crown. Colored paper or bond paper. Colored pen. Cotton. Scissors. Scotch tape and glue or paste. First, let us fold the paper into two. Then, ikat natin ito with the use of the scissors. Pero, dapat magpatulong tayo sa ating parents. Ipatong natin ang folded cut and then, let us draw boxes or squares sa ating paper. 
with the use of the colored pen. Then let us cut the boxes following what we have drawn. Let us be careful in this. Then, itape natin ang both ends ng ating paper. And it's time to decorate. You can use your colorful pens or crayons. You can draw any shape you want. Just like hearts, diamonds, and others. And then, let us color the shapes with our colorful pens. You have to be creative in this. Ayan na ang ating decorations. And now it's time to put the glue on the paper para idikit ang ating cotton. Wow! And then let us connect both ends of the paper para gumawa ng bilog. There you have it, our paper crown. Wow! It's so nice. Take a picture of your craft and share it with us too. Thank you. Kids, before we end our lesson today, let us all pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for teaching us and helping us to understand your word. Thank you for reminding us to become obedient to our parents. Lord, please help us also to have a heart that follows yours. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Wow, Ara! Ano yung nasa ulo mo? Crown to? Oh, ah, ganyan pala yung crown ni King Soldati. Nag-enjoy ka ba sa story? Oo ko. Nag-enjoy ako. Oh, alam mo ba si King Sol pala? Ay, naging salbahe. Hindi siya naging mabait na hari, di ba? Oo nga, Iko. Tama yun. Buti na lang. Ngayon naman, pahuwian na pala. So, magpapaalam na tayo. Bye-bye na mga bata. Goodbye mga bata. Bye. See you again next time. Bye. Punta ulit kayo sa Sunday. Goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to me, goodbye to you.